Welcome to Books for Success. Today, we're unraveling the insights from The Sleep Solution by W. Chris Winter. Discover how sleep works and how your day-to-day -day activities affect it. Learn about the importance of having a healthy circadian rhythm, good sleep hygiene, and a consistent sleep schedule. In this summary, you'll learn 1. The difference between feeling fatigued and sleepy. 2. How to develop healthy sleep hygiene. 3. What insomnia really is. 4. The impact of napping on your well-being. If you like our content, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. Don't be shy about smashing that like button if you discover something valuable. Let's grow and succeed together. Here we go. Sleep is one of the primary drives that keep your mind healthy. Sleep is an integral part of human life that many people don't pay adequate attention to. You need to sleep well every night to have a healthy and functional mind. Sleep is an essential part of the glymphatic system in the body that's responsible for removing waste in the brain. The glymphatic system, recently discovered by scientists, has been proven to work better when humans sleep than when they are awake. When you don't sleep well, your energy levels are reduced, and your body automatically directs you to replenish your energy by eating a lot of food, which can cause you to gain weight. Lack of sleep can also cause the heart not to function well. The heart needs a rhythm to pump blood, which is mostly unavailable to people who don't sleep well. The body does not function properly if you don't sleep. Sleep is an active mechanism humans use to stay alive. Animalistic drives in humans cannot be overlooked at all. The human body is programmed to have primary drives to keep the body well and healthy. There's the primary drive of food and water to nourish the body the primary drive to reproduce, and the primary drive to sleep. These drives are fueled by food, water, sex, and sleep. Without good sleep, a primary drive is neglected, and the body reacts to it in different negative ways. There are misconceptions about patients who feel they don't sleep at all or that lack of sleep does not affect their productivity. Regardless of how restless or busy you are, you'll sleep, everybody sleeps. The amount of time you need to sleep is relative because humans are different from each other. Whenever the question, how much time do you need to sleep, pops up, you should first know that there isn't a fixed time frame, but you should always sleep enough and well. Research has helped narrow down the various demerits of sleeplessness. Reading this summary will help unravel and overcome its telltale symptoms. Discerning between feeling sleepy and being fatigued helps you understand your sleep habits. To clearly understand your sleep problem, you need to, first of all, be able to discern between fatigue and feeling sleepy. People use these two words interchangeably, even though they mean different things entirely. When you're fatigued, you're not necessarily sleepy and don't necessarily have to sleep. On the other hand, being sleepy means you have to sleep for your body to feel good again. When you're fatigued, get some rest. When you're sleepy, get enough sleep. Fatigue can occur as a result of various things like 1. Malnourishment 2. Depression 3. Diabetes 4. Anemia 5. Pregnancy, etc. Unlike fatigue, sleep is a primary drive, meaning it can occur at any time, anywhere. Either medication, sleep dysfunction, or sleep deprivation causes sleepiness. Once you discover how sleepy you get and what makes you feel sleepy, you can control your sleep better. Two major systems in the body produce sleepiness, and they are the homeostatic system and the circadian system. The homeostatic system is responsible for bringing rest to a system that's not at rest. The circadian system, on the other hand, is the sleep cycle that runs in the background of your brain to cycle between sleepiness and alertness at regular intervals. Understanding the three stages of sleep helps you balance your vigilance so that you can sleep better. There are three stages of sleep among humans. They are 1. Light sleep, knee. 2. Deep sleep, N2. 3. Dream sleep, N3. All three stages are important to your life, and you must be familiar with them if you want to know more about how, why, and when you sleep. The N1 is the stage where the body slowly transitions from awake to asleep. Your muscles start to slow down their work while your body gradually slips into N2. In N2, your muscles have relaxed, and you're fully asleep, even though you still retain a certain level of awareness. Deep sleep is a stage of sleep that wanes as you get older. During deep sleep, also called N2, 
Your growth hormones, GH, work silently in the background, strengthening your body and bones and giving you the energy needed to wake up. Dream sleep, also known as REM sleep, rapid eye movement, is the stage of sleep where dreams occur. REM sleep is for dreams, which indicates that your brain is still active even though you are sleeping. The sleep cycle of a healthy human looks like this. Wake stage N1 stage N2 deep sleep or REM sleep. The presence or absence of vigilance in your life determines if you can sustain being awake or not. When troubled, humans find it hard to sleep, thereby resorting to medications that would help them sleep. Drugs that trigger dopamine and histamine only give you temporary relief, there's a huge chance they'll affect you negatively in the long run. Vigilance has its positive and negative impacts on the human body and mind. Too much vigilance can lead to insecurity and disrupt your sleeping order. You must maintain the balance between being awake and being asleep. Vigilance is the tool that helps you regulate your being awake and being asleep. Various forces help you to sleep or stay awake. A disruption in the order of these forces can make sleeping difficult for you. Misperceptions about your sleep state can disrupt your circadian rhythm and your sleep schedule. One of the biggest misperceptions about sleep from patients is that it is possible not to sleep at all for a very long period. Many of these patients come with stories of how they haven't slept in months and how they are so sure of it. Paradoxical insomnia is the medical condition responsible for this. Sometimes, you believe you haven't been sleeping because you can recall the image or scenario of something that happened as time went by. Paradoxical insomnia can be very tough to treat because most patients are so immersed in the belief that they don't sleep at all. It is not normal to feel you're not sleeping even though you are. The thought is draining and tiring and it can seriously wear you down. The first thing to do to correct the problem is to accept that you might have paradoxical insomnia. Circadian rhythms dictate everything you do and when you do them. It's like a clock that shows you when to do something. The circadian system tells the body when to sleep and when to wake. Whenever you eat or rest, your circadian system tells you it's time to do so. When you tweak or constantly override the time stipulated to you by your circadian system, you find it difficult to sleep. Circadian rhythm disorders occur when you don't pay attention to it or find it hard to adapt to a new situation or environment. Travel from one country to another, where the time difference is six hours. You will find it hard to sleep in the first few days because your circadian system has to adapt to a new environment and recalibrate your body to sleep when it's night and be awake by daytime. Jet lag and new worker shifts can also cause circadian disorder. Your body has to readjust to accommodate the new environment, and this can affect your sleep. Developing healthy sleep hygiene helps you sleep better. Several techniques can help you achieve good sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene is a laid-down plan that is meant to help you correct, adjust, or change certain things about yourself and your environment so that you can sleep well. Developing good sleep hygiene is good for the body. And some of the ways of achieving it are Create a hibernation layer a lot of people can't sleep well with the lights on. Make your room very dark and quiet. The brain easily picks up lights, and these lights can be a huge distraction for you. Avoid leaving your TV on because before you know it, you automatically get accustomed to it and won't be able to sleep without it. Also, try to always turn off your smartphone or any mobile device. Get cozy in your crib. Find a bed that makes you feel comfortable when lying down or sleeping on it. Uncomfortable beds would disrupt your sleep and make it difficult for you to cultivate healthy sleep hygiene. Find a peaceful place to sleep. In cases where you have to share your room with someone else, maybe a partner or a friend, there's little you can do. If your partner snores or sleeps with the lights on, you can either plead with them to stop or find another place to sleep. Avoid the bad habits that keep you from sleeping. Being heavily reliant on stimulants and drugs to sleep will have adverse effects. Avoid drugs or other things that you use before you sleep. Let your body adjust to the fact that you can sleep without drugs and stimulants. Watch your diet and sleep. Pay attention to your diet and how well you sleep. Heavy food before sleep can make you feel uncomfortable when you're sleeping. Eating at midnight too is not a good idea. Treating insomnia with sleeping aids only gives you temporary comfort when you sleep. The general belief that insomnia is the medical terminology for lack of sleep is incorrect. Everyone sleeps, so lack of sleep is virtually non-existent, save for some days. Insomnia is when you don't like your sleep or how you sleep. 
Humans go through times when sleep is difficult, but nothing suggests that it is insomnia. The true definition of insomnia consists of two components. One, a person is not sleeping when they want to sleep. Two, the person cares, and usually a lot, about not sleeping, whether or not they want to admit it. There are two major types of insomnia, simple insomnia and hard insomnia. A wide variety of things like anxiety, medical issues, and cognitive behavioral therapy cause simple insomnia. Anxiety and stress are things that keep you troubled and worried. In a lot of cases, these things are not important to you because you have no control over them or their outcome. When you clear your mind of worries and stop stressing yourself over and over again, you'll most likely have a good sleep. Unlike simple insomnia, hard insomnia is something you should be worried about. Hard insomnia thrives on fear and feeling helpless. When you're bound by fear and gripped by the thoughts of how helpless you are in controlling a situation, you're opening yourself to hard insomnia. Sleep is a skill that is mastered over time. So, if you're finding it hard to sleep well, don't let frustration, helplessness, or fear get the better of you. Take your time and make sure you continue trying to sleep well because once hard insomnia takes control of you, it might lead to dementia. Sleeping pills give temporary comfort that would keep you asking for more. In an attempt to sleep well, you're preparing yourself for discomfort later on, especially when you stop having access to these pills. If you're addicted to sleeping pills, you need to contact your doctor for steps to take to help you beat this addiction. Always contact your doctor to know more about sleeping pills, if you should use them, why you should use them, and when to stop using them. Create sleep schedules for yourself to control how and when you sleep. You must develop a wake-up time, as well as a sleep time. People who have problems sleeping don't have a particular time they wake up or sleep. Some people's wake-up time is determined by how well they've slept, while others have a fixed time to wake up daily. Developing a routine and making a perpetual habit helps you plan your sleep very well. While working on creating a wake-up time for yourself, you should remember that you don't have to copy other people's sleep duration. You need a sleeping schedule regardless of your age. Without a schedule, you won't be able to stay vigilant and conscious about whether you slept well or not. Time works differently for everyone, and the amount of sleep that gets someone comfortable might not work for you. Exercise, routine wake-up time, and constant sleep time are ways to create a sleep schedule to help you sleep well. You could even create a frequent routine of daily naps that works well with your itinerary, as we shall see in the next section. Napping is one of the most important ways to refresh the brain and regain some energy in the body. Everyone naps and it is perfectly okay as long as you know how to moderate it. A nap is not meant to compensate for lost sleep when the sleeper had the opportunity to sleep but did not. Substituting sleep with naps means you won't be able to sleep when you're supposed to sleep, and you won't be able to nap when you're supposed to nap. Like sleep, a nap should always have a wake-up time when you snap out of the nap and return to being active. When you fail to sleep well by staying up all night, you should make up for it as quickly as possible. Don't try to replace it with naps taken at intervals. Instead, make up for it by sleeping extra hours or minutes when you finally want to sleep. Did you know? Statistics from the American Sleep Association show that about 35.3% of adults report less than 7 hours of sleep during a typical 24-hour period. Snoring and apnea can be treated by seeing a polysomnography professional. Polysomnography involves using electrodes to measure brain activity, eye movements, and muscle activity and could provide the vitals required to nail the best treatment for snoring and apnea. Snoring can get disturbing and uncomfortable for people around you. When you sleep, you barely know if you snore until you are told by other people that you did snore. Snoring mostly occurs when you lie on your back, and this can be corrected when you train yourself to lie on your side instead. Patients often confuse snoring for apnea, but they are not the same thing. Apnea occurs when there's difficulty in passing oxygen to your brain. With each instance of difficulty in breathing, your brain will have to decide between sleeping and letting the suffocation continue or waking up so that you can catch your breath. Sleep apnea, repeated over a long period, takes a heavy toll on its patients. Several apnea treatments can help patients breathe better when sleeping. They are 1. Continuous Positive Airway Pressure CPAP is a device used to open the airways using air with an adequate amount of pressure. 2. Sleeping on your side. 3. Weight loss. 4. 
oral appliances. 5. Surgery. Uncontrolled apnea can lead to heart attacks, stroke, hypertension, and heart failure. Apart from apnea, several other things can go wrong with your sleep. 1. Restless legs syndrome. 2. Narcolepsy. 3. REM behavior disorder. 4. Bruxism, jaw clenching. 5. Parasomnias. Conclusion. Good sleep is as important as any other thing, so you should pay attention to it. Your productivity depends on how well you sleep, and lack of adequate sleep can harm your health. Sleep study is a technique designed to help your doctor monitor many things related to your sleep efficiency. By paying attention to the brainwave activity, egg, the eye movement, EOG, and the muscle activity, EMG, in a sleep study, doctors can determine the stage of your sleep in a flash. Patients can now do home sleep testing, HST, where they attach a device with wires to their body during the night wherever they are. These devices monitor airflow, breathing effort, oxygen saturation, pulse, and snoring. As easy as this technique and use of devices are, there is a major flaw, they don't study sleep. The device doesn't care if the patient sleeps or not because it has not been programmed to do so. However, following the simple cues that were highlighted earlier will most likely improve your sleep without having to visit the doctor. Take occasional naps and create a sleep pattern. You may need to understudy yourself to discover the sleep habits particular to your person. A consultation may be necessary for sleep deprivation that has gravitated into insomnia. Simply put, sleep hygiene is imperative for a well-rounded and healthy life. Try this. Develop a sleep schedule, follow it for a few weeks, and then check your level of productivity. If the previous trend continues, you may want to sit down with a doctor and discuss your sleep pattern. By doing this, you know where your problem is, your statistics, and how much you need to adjust or improve. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. If you've enjoyed our summary, consider reading the full book for a more in-depth exploration. Before you go, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and share this video with someone who could benefit from these insights. Until next time, keep reading, keep learning, and keep growing.